Hello, I'm John Furness and I am a blind woodworker and I also rebuild pianos. I love fine woodworking because of the visual release it gives me. I'm able to take an image in my mind, a blueprint that's only in my mind, and turn it into reality. I just, I zone into it. It's a, a zen thing for me. I really concentrate on what I'm doing and I'm, I'm just picturing that image in my mind of what it's going to be and what it's turning into. It's like I, I meditate on it. I just go into the project and it's nothing but me and my project. Me and the, the wood. I like to make tables, lamps, jewelry boxes, whatever comes to mind, whatever just grabs me at the moment. Everything is made of oak. You find oak and, and pine and those kind of woods everywhere. And I like to make something that's more unique. So I like to use the uh, exotic hardwoods because they have this really deep, varied, natural colors to it and, and beautiful grain patterns. And it's nice to be able to just put a clear coat over that wood and have it look 10 times better than anything that's been stained to have that color. My teacher at the uh, School for the Blind in Salt Lake where I learned to woodwork, and it's not a, an academic school, it's a, a place where people that have gone blind come to learn braille and uh, learn how to cook and clean on their own and they also had a wood shop. The teacher, he taught me all about different color exotic hardwoods and how to laminate different woods together to make designs and he really inspired the creativity I think in, in the woodworking that I've done because he gave me some major confidence in teaching me to woodwork, showing me that I can build a beautiful piece of furniture just as good as anyone that's got vision. When I carve on the lathe, I do something that you're really not supposed to do. They teach you not to do it. And that's putting my hand on the wood while it's in motion so I can feel what I'm carving. But I know how to do it. I've got a really delicate touch and I've taught myself how to do it. And if I didn't feel it while I was carving it, it would look like a blind guy made it, so. <laughs> hey John, yeah. put a smile on that face. Taking a picture of you. Working from home and those kind of things, I don't get out as much as I'd like to and meet people. And since Annie works at the uh, Habitat for Humanity, which is attached to the ReStore there, I decided to go volunteer there. And what I do there is repair small engines that come in. Like uh, they're, they get a lot of chainsaws and lawn mowers and those types of things. And I'll give them a, a little look over and see what I have to do to get it running and, and fix it up. And then they sell them in the ReStore. Lately, I've been making uh, some little planter boxes out of cedar plants that they're just little uh, five inch by six inch uh, by 12 inch tall little planter boxes that are going to be table pieces for a volunteer breakfast. I've adapted very, very well to being blind and it shows in my work and the things that I do. The table I built, it's very complex. It's got lots and lots of detailed carving from the lathe and contrasting trim work and two woods that match very well together. I have to say I'm very proud of that table. I know I did a good job on that table. I hate to toot my own horn. I don't like to sound arrogant, but I know I knocked it out of the park with that table. 